Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while. Sorry, it's been crazy. I'm trying to rearrange my craft room currently. It's not going well. <laughs> Today we're going to be doing shadow boxes, uh, specifically a rose shadow box for Mother's Day. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications. Okay, as you can see here, I already have the file loaded in Design Space. But to find the file, you can go to projects, type in flowers, Mother's Day, whatever keywords you can think of. Um, if you want this specific file, if you don't want this specific file, then obviously flowers, Mother's Day will get you other projects as well. As you can see here, there's plenty of options. They're all super pretty and fun. I chose this one. Um, you can customize it if you want it to be a different size. But I just left it to be the same because my shadow box is about the same size. I also mirrored the vinyl because I wanted to put it on the inside of the frame, not the outside of the frame. I personally don't like it on the outside of the frame, but you can leave it as is. I also didn't bother changing the mats, even though they have it two to one. I don't have a 12 by 12 sheet. I have an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So Two isn't going to fit, only one will. But I just clicked on the mat that had the one over and over and over and over again. I was too lazy to change it. It doesn't make a big deal unless you want to do it and walk away, but you can't even do that anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then you select your material, which in my case is cardstock. And obviously, the pattern that's supposed to go on the glass is vinyl. And then you cut. Now to roll our flowers, we are going to use this little doodad right here. It's got a little split in the end, which you could probably not see very well, but it's there. Um, I also stuck a hole in, in a prescription bottle cap to put it in. It makes it ro it makes rolling it a little easier, like on a surface, to keep it consistent. Sometimes I use it on a surface, but sometimes I literally just roll it in the air so it doesn't make a difference. But I'm going to show you both ways here. So you put your cardstock in between the little slits there. And you try to make as tight of a little twist as you can do without, you know, crumpling the paper onto itself. Just gently roll it when, it, when you're first starting it. The... The beginning of it, it, I would say, is probably the most important part. You want that to be super tight so that you can potentially make it looser later. But you can't make it tighter later. So, always as tight as possible. Unless you know for sure you want a big one. And then you just start rolling. And try to keep your finger on the edge where the top of the flower is. Because that will keep it from just kind of expanding as you're rolling it. It keeps it, again, tighter. The goal is to roll it as tightly as possible and then just make it bigger later. And I'm not feeding the paper through. I'm just letting it come into the roll, if that makes sense. You don't want to rip the paper, so you don't want to force it to do anything. You want to be super gentle with this. Try to roll in the circle. Don't try to roll straight because it's not going to work. And then when you get to the end here, it's going to be basically impossible to do it. And that's when you let go and you take it off of the thing. I'm blanking on what it's called right now. <laughs> it's got a name, but we'll just call it the doohickey for right now. <laughs> and then you're going to use that little end flap there to kind of glue it together. But first you want to see how big you want it. So you kind of put it onto your paper you see, oh, it's a little small. I want to make it a little bit bigger. And then you, oh, so gently let go of the flower so that it can expand a little. Oh, so gently. 
the first time you do it, you're probably going to let go of it too much and it's probably just going to explode into nothingness. I did that. Um, it's just, oh, so gentle of a touch to let go of it, to make it a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger until you get it to the size that you want it to be. And then you use that little bottom flap there to glue it all together. Try your best to get every little ring or as most of the rings as possible because anything that isn't glued down to the bottom can then rise up later and it can unravel itself and it looks weird. Uh, I had a few that did that when I first did one. It was not pretty. <laughs> I mean, it still looks pretty. Roses look pretty no matter what. And like they're flowers, so they're not always perfect, right? It's nature. But <laughs> but in this case, yeah, try your best to make them all look the same because that is kind of the goal. And there's my pretty flower. And now I'm going to glue it onto the actual paper. So I'll just put a little dollop of glue on the bottom here. And I'll stick it on roughly where I want it to be. I'm not exactly... I, I like to eyeball things a lot. It's probably not the greatest decision. should probably measure things more. But I'm a rebel, what can I say? <laughs> And now we're just going to do it all over again. I'm going to show you this time how I don't use the roll on the paper. <laughs> I'm going to show you this time how I roll it but not on the surface. So I'm just going to roll it in the air. And you can see kind of one more up close version of what I'm doing. I'm rolling, rolling, rolling. Now my finger is going to hold it in place so that it stays tight. And I'm just going to roll it. And it's really awkward when you have it up in the air like this because you're like, this do doodad ain't, it's not circular. So it's kind of flat. I don't think you can tell, but it's actually kind of flat. So to roll it, you're actually like flipping it, not rolling it. So it's kind of annoying to do up in the air. That's why I kind of like the wheel better because you can just wheel it on a surface. It feels more smooth and, and natural. Yeah, now we're just going to do this nine times because I got nine flowers. And here I just decided to pizzazz it up a little bit. I have these crystals that I bought at the dollar store. And I am just going to glue them between the flowers to try to create some sort of glam look, if you will. Um, it actually turned out pretty well, surprisingly.
now we're going to use our transfer sheet to get the vinyl off of the backing and onto the glass. If you, even if you have it on the other side, you don't have it on the inside, but you have it on the outside of the glass, you're still going to need the transfer paper. The only difference is my is mirrored. Like my image is mirrored. That is the only difference. The process is the exact same. You try to put the transfer paper down as cleanly as you can with the brayer so that you don't have, by the way, the brayer is this rolly thing, so that you don't have as many bumps and and bubbles as as possible. Then I also go over with this giant scraper because it helps adhere the vinyl to the, the transfer paper better. I find that um, if I don't scrub it a lot, it won't always peel up in one go. Even here, you can see that I scrubbed it and it's still not coming up all in one go. Like, depending on how intricate it is, depending on how sticky your transfer sheet is, depending on a lot of things, sometimes it just doesn't want to go and you're, can, you're just there scraping away until it decides it wants to come off. And I'm really sorry that the camera is shaking right now, but it is resting on my surface and I am, I am scraping as you can tell. And then once I get it all off, I am going to put it on my glass. A side note is you should probably cut your transfer sheet to be the size of the inside of the glass. It would probably be a lot easier it probably go a lot better and you'd probably have less bubbles. But I was reusing one from a different project. Um, I try to reuse them as much as possible to save money and save the environment. Um, so this one didn't go very well, as you can tell by me struggling here, um, trying to figure out how to get it on and not have a million bubbles. It actually did turn out terribly. You can definitely tell that uh, it wasn't on perfectly but I mean it's for your mom and your mom is gonna love it no matter what because you made it for her right I mean that's no excuse to have a crappy project but I think it looks pretty okay like I would I would give this to somebody that wasn't my mom so I'll, I'll take it just learn from my mistakes you know and then I struggle a lot to take off the paper because it's really sticky. And then you're essentially done and you have to stick your flowers into the frame, obviously. Um, depending on how close your flowers are to the edge, it's going to be a little hard to squeeze them all in. You're gonna have to poke at them a little bit to get them in, but you'll get there. It's a work in progress. I definitely spent a good like five minutes poking those things in, but in the end, it's it's a nice, pretty frame. And there you have it. There's my Mother's Day frame for my dear old mom. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.